welcome back today we'll be talking about prophecies another prophecy of Hazrat Mizah Allah we'll try and analyze it again based on no bias but the facts that are available it's going to be a slightly longer video but do bear with me right to the end while most of the prophecies of Hazrat Mizah Sahib were aimed at uh, uh, other religions and uh, with, the, with the intention of uh, proving the supremacy of Islam over other religions and other faiths this particular one that we talk about today is aimed at his co-religionists Muslims who had actually lost faith in the heart of their heart so much so that they were actually collaborating and conspiring with Hindus and Christian missionaries and who were known for their strong anti-Islam sentiments and activities uh, to, to conspire against Islam and to bring a bad name to Islam. The names Mirza Nizamuddin and Imamuddin, uh, who were blood relatives of Hazrat Mirza Sahib, uh, they, they're, they're more commonly known for the persecution um, that Hazrat uh, Mirza Sahib had to face at their hands. But what is less known is that they had lost faith in Islam altogether. They were known for desecrating the Holy Quran. They were known for the mockery of the personality of the Holy Prophet and for blasphemous comments that they made against the teachings of Islam. Heavily inspired by Christian missionaries and heavily inspired also by Hindu anti-Islam pundits like Pandit Lekra. Now Mirza Sahib approached them. They were his blood relatives and uh, it, 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 he says that it was a cause of pain for him. Uh, to see that his blood relatives, close relatives, had um, not only rejected him and his claims of being the Messiah and the Mahdi, but had, had turned away from Islam altogether. So he approached them, he would talk to them, he would try to make them realize, um, but to no avail. And then came a time when he actually wrote to them, clearly warning them of uh, a calamity that would strike them by Allah the Almighty if they were not to refrain from mocking Islam and the Holy Founder of Islam. Now in August of 1885 Hazrat Mirza Sahib writes to them that Allah has informed him that a calamity would strike the family of Imamuddin and Nizamuddin very shortly if they were to continue with their uh, uh, with their activities the anti-islam activities that they were indulged in conspiring with Hindus and uh, Christian missionaries um, but no change was seen rather what was actually noticed was that they made fun and ridiculed this prophecy and this warning and actually took it to Hindus and the most famous name of the, an anti-islam Hindu pundit Pandit Lekram and conspired with him to come to Qadian and actually challenge Mirza Sahib against what? Against Islam. So now this is Nizam Deen, Imam Deen and the Hindu Pandit Lekram coming together because they go and invite him to Qadian to come and challenge Mirza Sahib on the teachings of Islam. Uh, and uh, this is a block which was in the making. Now they never refrained, never repented. On the contrary, what was seen was a, an actually a rise in the activity, their anti-Islam activity uh, that was witnessed. So from August 1885, uh, Mirza Saab mentions that in about 31 months time, which takes us to February of uh, 1888, a daughter of Imamuddin passed away at a very young age, leaving a newborn child behind. This left the family in tatters. But as they say, habits don't go that easily. And what is witnessed in is that Nizamuddin and Imamuddin later on were to carry on with their anti-Islam, uh, anti-Islamic propaganda, um, which uh, had turned into an obsession and would never stop. Now Mirza Sab claims to have had another vision in 1886, where he saw the sister of Nizamuddin and Imamuddin, um, the mother-in-law. Uh, the, the grandmother of Muhammad Begum, but we need to remember Muhammad Begum is nowhere in the picture at the moment. The grandmother of Muhammad Begum, uh, in a dream, uh, who I mean, she was the cousin of uh, Hazrat Mirza Sahib, 
and she was very sad and gloomy and Mirza Sahib tells her in the dream tu bhi tu bhi oh woman repent repent and then further goes on to warn her that if you don't calamity will afflict you or your daughter or your granddaughter in another vision the same woman in the same state of agony appears to her in, in Mrs. Sahib's dream and Hazrat Mrs. Sahib warns her again telling her that you need to repent or one of the men in the family will die. Now like we've seen um, Nizamuddin and Imam, Imam Deen had, uh, had, had approached Pandit Lekram and other Hindus um, and had urged them to come and challenge Mrs. Sahib just to prove not only Mr. Sahib wrong but the whole of the teachings of Islam very wrong and they actually went on to publish a letter in um, uh, through a press called uh, Chashma e Noor Press in Amritsar in which they ridiculed the teachings of Islam now this mockery was so heavily influenced by Hindu teachings that they clearly mocked um, the marriage of a distant cousin uh, or a mother's cousin uh, to, um, uh, to a girl and they brought into the equation the marriage of Hazrat uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with Zainab, uh, because they were distant relatives and distant cousins, and mocked it. They said this was they they they, they thought that it was incest. So this point also needs to be remembered. Nizamuddin and Imamuddin conspiring, uh, uh, collaborating with anti-Muslim uh, Hindus and uh, Christian missionaries, and also mocking the teachings of Islam, especially the, te the, the marriage of Hazrat, the Prophet of Islam with Hazrat Zainab radiallahu anha. Now where did Muhammad Begum come in and why? This is in 1888 when the father of Muhammad Begum, Mirza Ahmed Beg, approaches Hazrat Mirza Sahib uh, to sign off a document, a legal document, um, so that a piece of land, that's a long story but I'll just cut it short, so that a piece of land could be freely transferred to one of the other family members and because Mr. Sahib was Rais of Qadiyan and the landowner of Qadiyan legally they were bound to get the signature uh, and the, and and Hazrat Mirza Sahib sees it as the final one tie with that line of the family which after this signature would be severed so he says I will pray to God and come back to you after that the next day Hazrat Mirza Sahib writes to Ahmed Beg and tells him that he has been informed by Allah that he would sign the document uh, if he, he i.e. Ahmed Beg, gives his eldest daughter Muhammad Begum in marriage to Hazrat Mirza Sahib. Also that Allah has informed me, says Mirza Sahib, that if you do not do that, if you marry her to somebody else, you, the father of Muhammad Begum, will die within a period of three years from that marriage and whoever she is married to will die within a period of two and a half years. Now the prophecy that was given to them and told to them and made expressly clear to them said that calamity will strike the family if this does not happen, if she is not married. Now we must remember that Hazrat Mirza Sahib is following in the footsteps of the Holy Prophet of Islam just as he had married uh, a distant cousin Zainab radiallahu anha, just as he had married Javeria, just as he, as he had married uh, Umm Habiba and just as he had married Safiya radiallahu anhu because we know that from those marriages the hearts of those tribes from which these women belonged had actually turned soft towards Islam so this is an attempt walking in the footsteps of his holy master Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam however Mirza Ahmed Bey clearly declines and turns down the proposal and expressly says that he will not go ahead with this marriage. So he does not marry Muhammad Begum straight away because the prophecy is meant to start from the time that he marries Muhammad Begum to somebody else. And that he does in April 1892. And in September 1892, he dies of natural reasons, according to the words of the prophecy. When he marries his daughter to have somebody else apart from Mirza Sahib, within a period of three years time he will die. He actually died within a period of five months only. Now after the death of Ahmed Beg, the whole family is struck by fear. Fear of God, fear of uh, them becoming a target of the prophecy and they can start to write, the whole family starts to write to Hazrat Mirza Sahib 
asking for forgiveness and Hazrat Mirza Sahib reminding them that because the prophecy was from Allah, they had to repent to Allah and ask his forgiveness. During this period, nothing actually is reported to have been written against Islam from this family. From Sultan Muhammad Beg, the husband of Muhammad Begum, especially. So the prophecy had it in detail. When, it, when you go into the details of the prophecy, Allah the Almighty had said to Mirza Sahib that I will not catch all of them at once. I will get them one by one, apart from those who repent and apart from those who refrain from um, the, 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 the evil acts that they'd been involved in. So this fear that had struck the family and Mirza Sahib continuously, I, every other book written after that, every other track that he publishes, he very clearly states in every one of them that the family is silent. Sultan Muhammad, the husband of Muhammad Begum, has remained silent all this time. He has been struck by fear. If not, he should come forward and state it very clearly. He did not, which means that he was saved by the same prophecy through a clause of the same prophecy where repentance was an option. Now, because Mirza Sahib had constantly written all along that if Muhammad Begum is married to another person and if they do not repent, the father will die within a period of three years. And if they do not repent, the husband of Muhammad Begum will die within a period of two and a half years. And Muhammad Begum will be widowed and will eventually come into my nikah. Now, Sultan begs. Uh, repentance or staying away from making any blasphemous comments against Islam not coming forward to say no I haven't repented despite Mr. Sahib challenging him to come forward and say he hasn't clearly shows that he had been saved accord according to the words of the same prophecy and Muhammad Begum never got widowed in the lifetime of the promised Messiah. Sultan Beg never comes forward in the life of Hazrat Mirza Sahib to say that um, Mirza Sahib is wrong in saying that I have developed a fear of Allah in my heart and I, have, I am now refraining from any such act. He doesn't come forward, he's saved, he remains alive, Muhammad Begum never gets widowed. And according to the same prophecy, Muhammad Begum never enters the nikah of Hazrat Mirza Sahib of Qadiyan. That is it. But, I know it's getting longer. I'm just going to take a little bit, another couple of minutes to just highlight an other uh, aspect which I know can be brought up. A, cu a, a couple of decades after the, 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 the demise of Hazrat Mirza Sahib of Qadiyan, Sultan Muhammad Beg writes to Tashizul Azhan, a publication of the Amdiya community, where he clearly states, now, and Tashizul Azhan publishes this letter, his handwritten letter, where he very clearly states, that I always thought of Mirza Sahib as a very pious person. I know that there were certain issues between the families, but I do regret that I never got the chance to get back to him in his lifetime. So this is a handwritten letter. As soon as this gets published, Muhammad Hussain Batalvi and Sanaul Amrit Sari, both in their newspapers, bring a denial from um, Sultan Beg saying that I never thought of Mirza Sahib as a pious person and I never repented and I still am a Muslim and I've got absolutely nothing to do with Mirza Sahib. But these two newspapers, al uh, Hadith and Ishaat al-Sunnah, do not provide a handwritten letter as the Amdiya publication had done. Now, let's give Ahle, uh, uh, Ishaat al-Sunnah and Ahle Hadith, the benefit of doubt. Let's maybe say Sultan Muhammad did write to them saying, I never repented. Although we do have a handwritten letter published, which Sultan Muhammad never denies. In the lifetime of Hazrat Mirza Sahib, Sultan Beg never came forward to say that he had not repented. Despite being openly challenged by Mirza Sahib, on various, on numerous occasions, he doesn't come forward to say that he has not repented. So the prophecy, which is usually called the prophecy of Muhammad Begum, has to be seen in various, uh, from various angles and various aspects, and then see it step by step. It's a multifaceted prophecy, and it has to be seen in layers. In the meantime, while all of this was going on, Imamuddin and Nizamuddin actually also went to 
Uh, Ahmed Beg himself, when he received the letter from Hazrat Mirza Sahib of the proposal uh, based on the prophecy of getting, uh, getting his daughter married to Hazrat Mirza Sahib, he took the letter to Noor Afshan, a Christian newspaper, a newspaper dedicated for Christian missionary activity, who mocked the letter, who mocked the prophecy, and who did everything that they could to ridicule um, what the, the contents of the letter and the prophecy. So this prophecy uh, actually should be seen as a prophecy of uh, against uh, the Christian missionaries who attacked Islam constantly, against Hindus who did the same, and against Muslims who, under the garb of Islam, attacked Islam from within. I've presented the facts that I could find during my research. I would appreciate if you came back with your questions and I will try and analyze the facts again. What I've said today, again, is without any bias and only the facts that I've been able to find. Thank you very much for watching.